Cause I ain't even had seen it, cuz. Yes, you did. No, you I see, you I see everything I else. I <laughs> oh, here you go. You see everything else. There you go. That ain't it, cuz. That ain't it. Yes, it was. That wasn't the box. That wasn't it. This might be it. This might be a vibe. You know, we had to bring it in on the vibe tip, cuz. I done sat down again with nothing to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's what going on. What are you on? Yeah, that's some good little podcast music. What are you what are you on, sir? Oh, what am I on? Yeah. <laughs> this, what you big mean? Ass, this big ass shirt. <laughs> the engineer robbing out. It's a whole vibe. We oh, back for another set, man. By popular demand. By popular demand. By popular demand. I said what I said. And I stand by that. There you go. Okay. Come on, Blue Steel. Shout out to Epidemic Music that are not sponsoring this video. I'm going to keep saying it until y'all email me and y'all sponsor me. Ooh, he said what he said. Okay. Oh, I think it's going to come hard when it come in. Y'all vibe with me for a minute. Yay, 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 yay. Told you it was going to come in hard. Yay, yay. Vibe. Man, I got the coolest engineer in the world. We Miller. Check him out. We really might have to put him on the payroll, cuz for real. Yeah. Yeah, hey. oh, I turned up. Hey. Let go. The whole vibe in there. <laughs> What's up, everybody, man? It's your boy Latessa, and we're back for another podcast city, man. We got another industry money going down right here in the spot, man. I am your host, Latessa. I'm your co-host, Kim. And we got somebody coming in dope today to talk to y'all a little bit about what everybody do and use 24-7 because we don't go nowhere without these, right? So, you know, I'm a business person, and I'm trying to make sure that my social media pops, so I'm definitely about to uh, pick pick and pick a little bit more and, and get me a couple of gems, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to dunk, stop talking for a minute, and I'm going to turn it over to her and let her introduce herself and let uh, y'all know who she is. Hey, girl, hey. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> so I am Shanisha. Like LaChesta mentioned, I am a digital marketing expert. I have been in marketing well over eight years. So started out with internships, and now here I am with my own agency with a full team, working with all industries from photography, restaurants, alcohol, boutiques, you name it, we can do it. So yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. Come in strong, then. <laughs> Come in strong, strong, then. That's what I'm talking about. Well, man, definitely, man. As always, man, I like to thank everybody for coming first and foremost, man, um, onto our platform. That I think personally, with the with the progression that we made thus far, we are. I think we're okay. You know what I'm saying? I think we're doing really, really good. Uh, so thank you for coming. You mm-hmm. know, and speaking on our platform. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get straight to it. So she says she's a social media expert. I fin to see if she's a social media expert. Cause <laughs> I, I to yeah, see. Yeah, because <laughs> there's some things I just need to know. But first and foremost, I'm going to let you like kind of sort of pull like a, a bullet point, bu- uh, excuse me, a bullet point system out, kind of sort of maybe like something that you maybe want to cover and talk about that you think are intricate when it comes to the uh, everyday consumer considering getting a uh, social media expert to come and take over their platforms and create uh, another stream of revenue because that's essentially what it is, another stream of revenue for their business. Okay, so the main thing I want to really get into is y'all need to stop listening to everybody. Um, everybody's telling y'all to post three to five times a day, use hashtags, post at this time, but none of that is true. Social media, nobody knows except the people who work for these platforms, so nobody can tell you you should post every day at 3 p.m., 6 p.m., post five times a day. You have to have a strategy. A lot of these marketing gurus just know content, but they don't know that content is only a piece of social media marketing. You have to plan this out far in advance if you want to stay on top. You have to think about any relevant holidays. You have to know your competitors. You have to really um, stay two steps ahead. So a lot of people are familiar with Fashion Nova. We know Fashion Nova is the ghetto marketer, but we expect that because that's how they branded themselves. We know they're going to be on top of the trends. Anything ghetto, like how Will, the whole Chris Rock situation, mm-hmm. Fashion Nova would come through and be like, use code uh, slap Will for 50% <laughs> off, and everybody going to do it, but we expect that we can't even be mad because they are consistent with their strategy. They use that. I didn't readers. even think about nothing like that. Yeah. Discount code, slap wheel. And it's funny. Wow. So that's humor. If you can tap into a person's emotions, they are going to remember you and they're going to start expecting stuff, stuff from you. Talk your shit. 
Fucking <laughs> shit, man. She came out the gate. Out the gate. She said tap into the emotion. Let me pull up my notes. All right, so, so I'm, I'm one of them one. people like that kind of sort of thought I knew a little bit more than what I actually do about algorithms. And well, I understand the YouTube algorithm a little bit now. So I, and, and that's why we film and that's why we do what we do here. You know, we stack up, stack up, stack up. That way we're consistently loading up at our consistent time. So that puts us in the algorithm because we're uploading to that platform on a consistent day and a consistent time. Okay. But that may not be the case for all the social media like you just said. Like, okay, that don't necessarily matter if you're doing this or you're doing that. So I'm going to say at the end of the day, what I want to see happen for myself and in – and you don't have to go too far in depth because I know that I don't want to dilute you and your business on what somebody needs to call or email you and do a consult for. You know what I'm saying? But as far as scratching the service, so we better have a better understanding. I've noticed that when I do post on my Instagram at certain times, the performance is better on, on my post. Mm -hmm. I have noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of sort of did care about hashtags. I stopped using them for a long time. You know the reason why I started by adding hashtag? Why? Because I seen Calvin doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's why I started by using hashtags. Like I, I really because I didn't download it and pay three ninety nine for the hashtag thing to show you what hashtag to use. There's trending and everything. Like thinking that it was gonna help me. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like I really haven't got the overall results that I think that my work should be getting on any platform from keeping it a buck. So. If, if I'm the client and I just came into the office and I'm in the console and I just told you what I told you, how are you responding to go ahead and reel me in? Cake. Easy. What? Easy. What? It's too easy for me. So I know you mentioned, you know, you kind of told me what you do. You feel like it's not working, you know, I guess, you know, going it's, as far as you expect it to go. And you mentioned Calvin, you know, using hashtags. I've seen some photographers use the hashtags. They put in, you know, one word. You use the app. It generates 30. Let's stop doing that. Um, when you use hashtags, you want to think about what your audience is actually searching for. We, you know, we quick to use a um, Montgomery photographer, a Hoover photographer. That's okay, but you have to think, okay, if my audience is, let's say, influencers, so you should probably be using beauty influencer, um, black YouTuber, black MUA, what are they actually searching for? So you wow. can show up in their feed. And when you, you can follow those hashtags, when you engage with people who post in that, you show up in their content. So it's really, like I said, a strategy. Like, just because you see somebody doing it don't mean it's working. So did you just tell me to tap into a hashtag that's beneficial to me and what I do, follow that hashtag so that I can engage the people that also follow that hashtag and that makes my content come up in their stuff? That's why I see it. It's literally like you're thinking about what they're intentionally searching for. Right. You, It's really a that psychology thing. Like, with yeah. marketing, it's a whole mindset thing. So right. you have to get into what are these people searching for. Do they, You have to know their lifestyle. What do they do when they wake up? Do they go out to eat often? Do they drink wine? All that stuff will help you know how to create content. Because you have people who, these influencers who like wine tastings, you may want to do, you know, go out and, you know, film you or film somebody out tasting, tasting wine, taking pictures. That kind of content will capture their attention because that's their lifestyle. It's not just about being in the studio doing shoots. We know you do that. Right. Show me what makes you different. How are you creative? Have some fun. Be funny. Do some skits. Hey, hey man. <laughs> hey man, hey, hey, open up, open up my thing. I think I got a document on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on paper. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. I, I mean, I think I ain't, I ain't gonna count. I ain't, ain't even gonna count. Some of the stuff that you saying, I probably know two percent about. And so that's a whole 98 percent that i'm missing out on like this this the thing you know when you own a business you good at what you do we all good at what we do in our field so if you know you ain't got time to be keeping up with social media that's why you hire somebody like me i just need you to take the pictures and videos and let me handle the creative side that's what i do so. man we might need to cut that interview short because <laughs> i ain't got no money man i ain't got no money man <laughs> Golly, man. <laughs> she sounded real good right now. I ain't got to worry about it. Nathaniel. So you got Nathaniel. <laughs> yeah. That's it. My clients Lee, love it here. Man. Listen, you adding four to the payroll. <laughs> I see. It's starting to just because these are coming too. We'll talk about that later. Mm -mm. Say, so y'all ain't get rid of me. Y'all y'all know that, right? I said, uh, <laughs> blank stare. <laughs> so I love you, bro. I said, uh, blank we, we, stare. We, we, we'll talk about it. But, okay. 
So what's the name of your business? It's Wine Down Marketing LLC. Wine Down Marketing LLC. And what social media platforms do you have your business on social media platforms or do you just personally advertise your business on, on one platform? So our business is actually on LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, I mean Instagram, okay. and Google My Business. So Google My Business. Mm-hmm. She's so saying people, like Google me. Oh, yeah. I was about to say that's a new platform. So it's, it's, I ain't heard a, about that. It's one. a platform. So when people get on Google and search for, you know, let's say a photographer, who photographer, if you're on Google My Business, you can show up first in that search, which will increase your brand awareness. So you tapping into the SEO stuff too? Yeah. Girl. So now I know about that. Yep, that's it. Because I know how expensive it is. Yeah, you got to have a Google My Business page and then get people to leave you reviews to help you show up and rank, you know, higher. In the so do they be calling you all the time trying to get you to uh, add to their little voice thing? I honestly don't like to answer calls. I prefer emails because we are super busy. I'm not one of the agencies that's going to tell you to call us. I'd rather you email us so we can actually schedule a call. That way we can plan to talk to you. I hope you ain't capping, man. I'm, I'm so I'm going to call my PI and tell them to look at what you really doing. <laughs> Let's do it. I got testimonials I can send you from clients. Because I ain't going to lie to her. She said I have If receipts. you don't get up off that bomb in there, man. <laughs> she said I have receipts and you are not going to play with me. Because I seen I'm you do a Pinterest video the other day and was like, boom, boom, I did this, this, and the third. And it got this many hits in this amount of time. And I was like, oh, she capping, bro. Nope, it got 37 views. It was my first ever Pinterest post. And I'm real big. That's the thing with marketing. We love research. We love reading. We love videos. We love seeing what's trending. That's what we live to do. So just by me, you know, educating myself on these different platforms, I was able to reach that many people from my first post. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I, don't, I don't know what to say, man. Like, I'm kind of <laughs> blowed, bro. Like, I just. And that's the thing. Um, Let's say, I know you kind of mentioned or you asked, you know, if you were my client, what would the steps be? So I'll give you a little bit about how my process works. Okay. So you find me, whether it's social media, an ad, uh, email, whatever it is, we book a call. You know, I ask you about your business problems, tell you how I can help. And then, you know, you get the contract, you get the invoice, we pay. I then start researching your competitors. I take into account your goals, all the services you provide, your prices, your desired revenue. And then I craft a marketing strategy. So... I think that, that takes about a week because mm -hmm. I want to take my time and do it right. And after that's done, I walk you through the strategy so you understand exactly what I did and you'll know what to send me. Once you send all the content, we then post it and engage with your audience and you watch your business explode. That's, that's as simple as it is. So typically, like, how long would that take, like, for, for your client to see, like, their, their results after working with you and everything? Great question, Kim. Yeah. Great question. So most agencies tell you a quarter, mm -hmm. three months, but okay. I, can, I can really say one month. For us. So that's how you dig in our hand. One, my boutique client in LA started off with 10 orders a month. After one month, she's at 175. And that's light work. Wow. Bruh. <laughs> and so you putting this camera on her because she's sitting over here in this corner talking like she a real boss, bro. Like real boss, bro. <laughs> I'm talking about boss, boss. <laughs> Not what we was talking about the other night. You should have hit the bomb on that. <laughs> that was you should have oh did. God. I'm really spe I think I'm so speechless simply because And this is rare, y'all. Like, for real. <laughs> like I've been here doing the most talking in our like, interviews. Yeah. And it, and I think I'm just thrilled because social media really matters to my business because I care what people see. Like it's a, a lot of like him though, we have a lot of conversations. It's a lot of stuff I don't even post that I've so done. Right. Like it's a lot of stuff I don't I don't even post it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times I think I don't post simply because I be like, I just feel like the work that I do just deserves so much more attention because of the thought process and, and the creative side of me that I put into every time I pull my shutter button. Let me, let me ask you this. You say you don't post because you feel like your work deserves more recognition, but you don't post? Uh, she calling me Ooh. out too. And then, oh, and then, I'm gonna hit her with the Kim Sammons real quick. And then you said you put in, you know, all this work on the, on the, you know, behind the scenes. How are we gonna see that? Where you behind do. the scenes content at? Listen, listen. And I'm a Kermit the Frog on that one. She, Where you behind the scenes point. content at? Listen. How are we gonna know if you don't show us how much work you put in? That's a good we question. We need to see the value. Shanisha, listen. Huh? When I tell you I put in work. But we don't see that. I gotta see. 
I'm saying though, Shit. man, the, the platform there, all you gotta do. Like I feel like, all right, so I'm I'm gonna keep it a book. I I think that honestly, mm-hmm. if I had somebody to run my social media, it would make life easier. I think that if I had somebody to edit videos for me, it would make life easier. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of content that I have right now is a, some of it. Well, I'll say probably say, but maybe about forty percent of it hasn't been visually made because I have to do it myself. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like today has probably been one of the most refreshing days when with us doing our podcast because I don't have to worry about the room on the other side of the glass. You know what I'm saying? Like I can literally sit here, my attention being here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you can look around from when you walk inside the establishment and tell that we take what we do seriously. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I bring her into what in my world and whatever aspect I can so that she gets additional attention and additional clients and additional whatever. Like I want a store, but I'm the type of person like I like to fly in V from the from the from the Mighty Ducks back in the day. Like I want my team so we can all fly together. So I think right now what really limits my exposure, to be honest, it's not really the fact that I don't post as much. It's just because I don't have the, the right things lined up that I need to. But I commend you on what you said because I just got to talk to my pastor a few minutes ago. Like my pastor operates like that. He mm-hmm. believes in hiring people that are experts in what they do. Mm-hmm. So that's their concentration to make it to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? But in the game we in as starting out entrepreneurs, we just have to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? So I think at the end of the day, I ain't gonna lie. I done had a couple of people approach me about social media stuff. The only thing that stood out to me was when I said, I don't know what it was. I was mad at you, was you going to shoot or you was looking at the photos I took of you or something like that. And I was like, okay, what are you doing? You was like, oh, yeah, I handle social media. And, and it was just like, just like you sitting over there, I ain't even going to call you cocky. I'm just going to call you confident <laughs> in what you do. Like, I, you was just like, yeah, I, I handle social media. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with this shit. Like, this is what I do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, cool. How much you cost? And then you hit me with that number. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get with you. Let me get your number. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me make sure my chips together before, you know, I, I, I subscribe to that. But what you do is definitely necessary for 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 success you know yes. what i'm saying like absolutely you got you got older people like my my mentor he's been in the game for 20 plus years photography he don't have to show nothing like he got the the word he got the old school advertising market word of mouth mm-hmm. somebody he did something for gonna tell somebody else and that's how he generates a lot of money when it comes to photography and photo booths. You know what I'm saying? But me and my new age, you know what I'm saying, being that it's not something that I've been in for seven, eight, nine, ten years, you know what I'm saying, why I can rely on the word of mouth. Now I had to do what is the custom today in order to be able to drive the business the way that I want to. So it, I'm definitely not, I don't have you here when I said, hey, I'm going to drill you. And when I, when, I, when I said I said I was going to drill you is because I think I know what you're telling me I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. So, well, like you said, you know the I'm gonna say the OGs they can get away with the the whole word of mouth thing, but I think you're right in the middle. Like you can still get the word of mouth referrals. You you should never depend on one channel. Like never just depend on social media. Never just depend on word of mouth. I've heard that Everything before. is a piece. Marketing is a pie. Social media is just a slice. Right. It's a big slice. But it's just a slice. You still have your word of mouth. You still have your events. The whole goal is to build your foundation, to build relationships with people. If people can get to the point where they recognize your brand without you having to introduce yourself, that's a great start. Social media just puts you in front of people who can't get here right now, but they they thinking about you. In social media, you can retarget those people once you get in front of them once. If you have the right stuff set up, you can stay in front of those people because research says that when people see your brand at least seven times, they're more than likely to buy with you. Instead of like, it's kind of like, if I didn't know you, if I had met you at that shoot and I just saw you posting, I'd be like, oh, this work, cool. I probably would not have booked because I don't know you. Like, I didn't see it enough. Whereas with, you know, Calvin, I've been seeing his work for it. Consistently. Long, consistently. Yeah. So that's the thing I want to get in your consistency. Like, I know you mm-hmm. said you don't post, maybe because you feel like it's not, you know, perfect or you want it to be a certain way, but you just got to get it out there. Yeah, my iPad went up there. I'll, I'll let you look at the iPad. <laughs> All my work perfect. That's, okay. That's another thing you, know, you just said, too. Like, I've seen how social media has just changed, like, in the last the aesthetic mm-hmm. of how of, of people's content has changed like in the last couple of years. And I know like reels are a big thing now because they're more organic and right. it's kind of like more free flowing. Mm-hmm. And 
even though like people do plan that out. Like, so what do you tell someone that's really kind of unfamiliar with how to do reels? Like, how can they go about um, incorporating them in their business? Okay, so all of my clients are probably double my age. So I like taking the time and just walking them through the platform and just because some of them don't understand like the different social media platforms as a whole. Every platform has a different purpose and you should be posting different types of content on each platform. YouTube is long form videos. You'll mm -hmm. take that long video, post it, break it up, post segments on TikTok if you just don't have time. So now or if you can just, my <laughs> or, <laughs> or you can you can just um, plan your content. I'm so big on planning. Mm -hmm. I really like to stay a month or two ahead. So mm -hmm. you plan your content and videos on Reels should be no longer than 30 to thirty seconds to one minute. Yeah. Right. So you have to think about what can I do to capture somebody's attention within five seconds? Because that's all you got. People have short attention spans. Right. They don't like to read. That's why you have to, when you write captions, you have to space it out strategically because mm -hmm. they don't like to see a big paragraph. It's so much stuff that goes into the mindset. Mm -hmm. But for a person who's just starting out, I would recommend thinking about your overall goal for the month, your revenue goal first. I like to start from the work backwards. So if you want to make $10,000, you know, you know, your service is $200, figure out how many customers you need. Mm -hmm. You probably have to reach maybe at least 10 times more than that to, you know, even get that many people to your platform. So it's really a numbers game mm -hmm. and a strategy game. So once you know that, you'll know, okay, I want to get X amount, of, X amount of people to book um, a lifestyle photo shoot. So I need to reach, let's say, 20,000 people. Okay, how am I going to reach these people? Reels, I can go viral easily with the right video. Mm -hmm. So let's say this video, you know, go viral. And this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to do a funny skit with X, Y, and Z. This is going to be the sound. We got a trending sound. We're going to use these hashtags. We're going to, you know, we're going to wear this, whatever. Mm -hmm. I would say get so good at planning what you're going to do and just do it. You can always, you know, delete the clip start over and reels is easier than TikTok to me. You can just upload multiple clips. You can even get on Canva and use a template mm -hmm. and just upload videos there for a more aesthetic look mm -hmm. to stick to your brand. So just do it, find a good sound, have fun. People are on social media to really be entertained. You know, it's 80% yeah. fun, 20% business. Right. So more so lifestyle content and then, you know, a little bit of promo. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> will. Yeah. They gonna want this, 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 this. Uh, this here podcast might go up in the numbers. This might, this one, this one right here might do some numbers. So, going into the grand opening for my studio, I think I probably spend about maybe right at five hundred dollars mm -hmm. on promotion stuff. All right, so. I think I spent two fifty on Instagram and another two fifty on um on Facebook. And um yeah. And uh what I, I went through that and I you know, I put the flyer up and then, you know, asked what you want the action and bud to be and I said, Hey, I want them to sign up and it basically directed them to where the ticket sale was and you know, I said, Hey, put grand opening, you know, sip and shoot event, blah blah blah, whatever the case may be. And uh, I think with the two fifty, with I'm just gonna say the total five hundred that I spent. Right, number one, I got bit in the butt because my contractor had an unforeseen action that happened in his family, mm -hmm. so we end up having to move the date. So I just basically lost the five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But out of five hundred dollars and all the clicks that I got. I only got like three registrations off of it. So what did, if you can shed any light on that again without going into, I don't want to derail anybody from calling Look, your phone and saying, all hey. your questions. This is fun. I can answer all your questions. So okay. you got 500, you spent $500. You, do you know about how many people that click? Do you remember? I could tell you. Okay. Exactly. Ken, we need to I'm glad that no music come up because I would have been <laughs> mad, bro. Because like I, people be on me about my phone in here, and I, well, I be on everybody else about their phone. Right. And then every right. time we have a mishap with a phone, it be my phone. <laughs> and I swear I've been and done everything that I thought I was supposed to do. I'm gonna sit my tea on this. Let's see. There you go. All right. So if I go to here and insights is where it's gonna be at. Let's see. But while you're pulling that up, I'm going to say 
it sounds like you ran ads um, on Facebook and Instagram. Correct. And mm -hmm. that's also like when you spend the money, it's going to always be a numbers game. So for every 100 people who see something, only expect one to, you know, take the next step. So if, if 500 people click, only expect five to even look at the booking page. And then from mm -hmm. that five, only expect maybe one to book. So you got to get so many more eyes depending on your revenue goal. Mm -hmm. It really just depends on how much money you want to make you know, will determine how many eyes you need to get on it. So if you need to make $10,000, you may have to reach 40,000 people. And it may be a different number or it may just be a different platform. And with Facebook and Instagram, I wouldn't run stuff separately just because Facebook bought Instagram. Mm -hmm. I will always do my ads in a Facebook business manager or meta business manager now, mm -hmm. where that way you can build your Facebook ad and it's going to automatically run on Instagram and you can do better targeting. So you can target people actually near this address. You can target people around this area. Mm -hmm. You can target business owners, depending on you know who you want to get in here, just being clear on your target audience. But I probably would have done um, a location-based ad since you do have a physical location to get people around this area. I would have mm. gotten on LinkedIn and did some leg work. I would have reached out to these business owners here um, and built a relationship and told them, nah, hey. we definitely got a plan for that. We so, already got it. We're going to actually, we're going to do door to door on foot. Like, we're going to okay. walk in and actually talk to the actual owners to let them know we at. We got a little small promotion that we that we doing for them. So we got, mm -hmm. we definitely got something going for that. So I'm just going, I'm going to go off of the last one that I did. So, um, I, I pulled back on the last one that I did, Shanisha, because of the results I got from the last one. So, but I did an ad on Instagram, and I only spent 70 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. I got more clicks on it than I did when I spent more money. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the last one that we did, it says on here on Instagram, I spent $105 on the one on Instagram from the last one I did, and I got 88 clicks. Um, I set it up for... Uh, da, 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 says it reached a total of 5,821 people. Um, I thought it would show me how I set it up for like the target. I was stuff. just gonna say, do you know who you targeted? But mm -hmm. with Instagram, it's it's a boosted post, just like if you're not building stuff from the meta business suite, it's gonna always be a boosted post, which will hurt your targeting options. Okay. That's why I say I would always make sure you go to business.facebook.com, mm -hmm. do all your ads, and there it's going to be under the ads manager. But before you even do an ad, I need you to go into events manager, set your pixel up. A pixel is kind of like a tracking code, I would say. So you know how you order something from your favorite store and you get that, that tracking code to track your order. Like the Google Analytics code. Like... So a pixel is a 16-digit code and where you would get it from Facebook and you would put it in the back end of your website. This is how when you order, where, when you add something to your cart online but you don't buy it, but then you see some on Facebook like, like hey, you forgot this, or yeah. mm -hmm. you're being retargeted. So a pixel allows you to retarget people. That's how you make money. If you don't have that, if you don't have <laughs> that, and like I said, people have to see you at least seven times. So if you can't retarget them people, you're not guaranteed to reach the people you reach from the Instagram and Facebook ad, whereas... Before you do another ad, I would definitely go ahead and put that pixel in there. Retarget, you can retarget people who engage with your Instagram post, who saved it, who liked your Facebook page, you know, lookalikes of people who are already booked. It's just so much stuff I can go into, but you need to have a pixel before you do anything else because anything right now would be a waste of money because you can't get back in front of them people. So get the pixel installed first. Shanisha, how old are you? I'm 23. Do your thing, sis. Do your thing, bro. Time, bro, like you done changed my whole mindset about you, like golly, bro, like, and I ain't gassing you up, like literally everything you telling me, I have no clue about it. That's what I'm here for. I have absolutely no clue about it. Bro. That's what I'm here for. So, is your job allowing you to travel as well? Yeah, I actually have a two week vacation leaving Thursday. Yay, where are we going? We are Look going me. to I said we. Jacksonville, we're going to Destin. I don't know where else we're going to go, but we're going somewhere. Okay, girl. <laughs> you going to be shopping while you're going all these places? Typical woman, boy, I tell I you, bro. You, you got to buy new Ooh. stuff for the trips. What you mean? You got to buy new stuff for the trips. You got to. It's a different kind of sex that you be when you out of your hometown. Like You know what? what? Per. All right, so I'm going to change gears and we're going to go back to it. So I just did a try on haul. Uh, okay. Fashion over. Nah, it wasn't fashion over. Well, because I'm kind of sort of like you. I'm, like, I'm a networker, truly. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So if I see an avenue where I can help somebody, 
You know what I'm saying? I want to do it because at the end of the day, like I told you, I'm all about content. Okay. I don't care how I need to get it. I need to give me some content so I can post whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So one of the models that came to my grand opening, she has a YouTube channel. Okay. And it's, it's doing okay. I, I can see if she stick to what she's doing, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. One of the things she do is she do try on hauls. I know two other models that I work with that's booked me that are boutique owners. So I was like, hey, I know this YouTuber that does, you know, um, does our try on hauls, and you got this boutique. I was like, y'all want to come together? I'll provide the cameras. You know what I'm saying? She try on your clothes, talk about them, drop your links inside of her stuff, and then we all come together, collectively did something together. Right. All I need y'all to do is, if I ask you who did the video or whatever, right. just tell them who done it. You know what I'm saying? And then we all be cool. So we all came together and we did that. She tried on this one dress. And when she put it on, she said, oh, yeah, this is Miami <laughs> vibes right here. You don't wear this nowhere else. You just wear this when you're in Miami. So I tell you that big, long oh, story yeah. to say I get what you're saying about it's certain outfits and it's a certain look and a certain feel that you have for certain places that you're going. Right. So I definitely get that. It's an aesthetic. Definitely. It's definitely. an aesthetic. It is. Define aesthetic, aesthetic, aesthetic for me. Aesthetic is everything. What's it's the mean? overall look and feel of life. Yes. It's a vibe. I'm in here with two intelligent women, bro, because I don't know what it, <laughs> I don't you, even know, I don't you know how to, how you, how you spell it, Steady? Is it E-S? A-E. A-E-C. See, look, I'm, I'm on camera, I'm on podcast. <laughs> Fuck up, be like, that nigga grow ignorant. He can't even spell, boy. It's like the skin of aesthetic, which is like, you know, face. So what are you doing for the brand while you're on vacation? Are you taking a total break from it, or are you still answering emails, or are you still, you know, giving two hours a day when you're drinking your coffee in the morning before your day gets started, you know, when you you didn't drunk your tomato juice and your water because <laughs> you're trying to get back right from that hangover. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, how are you handling that? Why, you, like, or, or do you take a vacation? Like, when you go, because I know some people that go on vacation, they they are completely away from vacation. Like, one of the key things that I'm surprised Kim hasn't asked you because she always asks me because she makes me stand my toes <laughs> about it. And we always ask our other mm -hmm. guests like, how do you balance? You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, how do you turn it off and turn it on? So when you go on vacation for how long you're going? Or are you still gonna be working a little bit, or are you actually going to give your mind and 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 your business to all? Well, I ain't gonna say your business, but give give you a rest while you're out. So I really believe this, and I feel like everybody's opinion may differ, mm -hmm. but I truly love what I do. Right. So even when I'm on vacation, my mind don't stop thinking about marketing. So what I will do though, um, through the week, I'm actually actively, you know, doing client work. I'm engaging with the accounts, doing what I need to do, talking mm -hmm. with clients, handling meetings. But weekends. I'm just making content. That's it. I'm only making content. I'm not looking at emails. I'm not doing nothing else. I'm just making content. I'm planning my week. Plan my week, make content. By content, I mean content for me, not for clients, but for me. Mm -hmm. So fun videos. I'm like, when I be on the beach, there's going to be content. Um, you know, I'm be going out eating. That's content because people like to be in your business. Like, they know that you had a business, but they want to see that you're still human. Like, what do you do in your day-to-day -day life? Facts, like, facts, so facts. I'm going to let you see what I'm eating. I'm going to let you see how I'm dressing. I'm going to let you see, you know, how I dance. Just fun because people want to connect with people. They buy into people. Mm -hmm. If they like you, they will forever support you. So I'll be spending my vacation doing that kind of content, but I'll still be working. Like Monday through Friday, I still treat it like like it's my job because it is. Gotcha. And I have clients who the money don't stop, so I can't stop. Gotcha. So I, I feel you in what you just said too, though. You know, because I know um I know I know a model that I did an interview with, and she just actually told me today she was like, I actually have a boyfriend. I was like, what? <laughs> she was like, yeah, I got I got somebody that I'm like seriously dating. She was like. But that's a private part of my life. Right. Mm -hmm. So as a model, there's something that I want to sell to the people as a model. Right. But that's my private life. And yeah, I got a dude. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have never known it from how you composed yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I, I get what you're saying about folks like to be in your business, see what you got going on. But they, they but they, they they create this 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 thing in their mind of you, what they see. Like, right. like right now, you know, Chris Brown got a son. What, I think his son was three or four years old. The one baby boy? Two? Maybe one or two. Yeah. I think the little girl older. But we don't never hear about Chris Brown who he's with anymore. At the Rihanna, we didn't never hear about any more of his relationships, even though he's dating. Like, because what he wanna say to every girl to listen to his records is that you can have Chris Brown. If you want him, you can have him. <laughs> even though you probably can't. You see what I'm saying? Right, like it's right. like like that thing about, you know, ASAP messed it up for all the fellas. <laughs> You'll be all right. ASAP messed it up for everybody, Somebody man. That man is tissue. You'll be fine. <laughs> he messed it up for everybody, man. 
Like he re, like Riri probably never will leave that dude, bro. I don't I don't I see them being another Will and Jada on right. a good tip. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I really don't see ASAP leave her. But I, I get what you're saying, man. So I think this I think you choose, you know, how much you're willing to share. Like my man, my finances, um, my family, my prayers would be something that never make it to social media, but my At fun, all. like my business routines, my daily routines, my health, my strategy, you know, me being goofy, I don't mind bringing that, but a lot of stuff just gonna stay personal. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I had to learn that the hard way. I got like that when it came. When I got in the ministry, I mm-hmm. stopped posting all my business. Prior to that, though, every single thing I was doing, I was showing it. VIP session, let me take a picture. <laughs> Man, these girls, let me take a picture. Doing this, let me take a picture. Let me write a post about this. Oh, you don't like what I said? Well, let me put it up on Facebook real quick so I can get the comments from my <laughs> followers so they can tell you that you're wrong. Like oh, It was God. just like everything. I'm, And you know what? I'm glad God released me from that. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because there is a sense of just having some type of, you know, privacy in life. Like, whoever I end up with next, like, I hope they don't, I'm not the dude to plaster you all over my social media. Right. Like, it's not happening. You know what I'm saying? And that don't mean that I'm hiding you. It just means that there's just the aspect of life. Like, I don't want people dealing with point blank period. I don't want to really know. So, I think that on tonight, bro, you didn't came through this mug and shut it down. <laughs> Literally. I'm glad you doubled back Thank you so much for coming, like for yeah, real, bro. Like, like you you gonna make me I had to call my account one time this morning. I think I gotta call her again. <laughs> really? That's how you feel? <laughs> I mean she she's dropped some gems. I'm I'm just saying. So golden nugget. This is what we did for on the on the outro and get ready to leave out the door. This is what we did for our realtor uh, that we had in here, Justin Williams, okay. um, we was like, hey, if you had to give a potential person or a listener of our podcast or our YouTube, if you had to drop them like a five-step process, quick little five-step process, if you had to just put it together, be like, if you're getting ready to consider a social media manager, what are five things that you want to tell them to kind of sort of, kind of, sort of be getting in order mm-hmm. for when they make that email, they get that phone call? And then after you do that, I want you to say right at the end, but you ain't got to call nobody else. You ain't got to email nobody else because you can email me then say your name, give your title, what you do, your business, your social media handles, where everybody else can find you, okay? Okay. All right. So, and this is your camera right there. All right, cool. So I believe, you know, in terms of what you need before you hire an agency or a freelancer, depends on the stage you're in in your business. So if you're in the beginner stages and you don't have the agency budget yet, then I would say you just need to make sure you have someone who is you know consistent on social media who posts the kind of content that shows they know what they're talking about who probably is someone who you know has experience in your particular industry so if you're in beauty then try to get someone who works in beauty um those are probably the main ones for just starting out now when you move to me and you're ready to hire an agency where we have a graphic design and copyright planning like all that so i want you to already be making money because you have to have a marketing budget and yeah, if, you, if you're going to be making money, you have to put money into it. So you have to already be making revenue, consistent revenue. You have to be willing to provide the content, so videos and photos. You have to know your numbers, know how much money you're making every month, know how much, you know, what your goal is, how much or, you know, how many of you need to sell to reach their revenue goal. Um, have an open mindset. Know that you don't know everything, but that's why you hire somebody else. It's okay to not know everything. It's okay to be uncomfortable because when you're uncomfortable, you make more money. So get uncomfortable if you got to hire somebody, if you got to risk it, whatever it is for you. And be be open-minded. You know, don't, don't rush the process. Understand that even when you do hire professionals, it takes time. Like the first month, in, it, the first month is just building brand awareness. So letting people know that you're out here, getting more people aware of your brand. So that's why I would say, you know, my agency is different. I can say we get results in a month, but I'm going to say most would say a quarter. So first month is spent um, building brand awareness. And after that, you look at the results, see what should be done better, what, what worked and what didn't, include more of what did work, try new things. Marketing, you always try new things, but just be open-minded, be ready to try new things, and be ready to make some money. And understand that when you do make more money, how are you going to handle growth? How are you going to hire people? Are you good at training your employees? Have a whole system. I need you to prepare for the growth. Don't get all this money. and You can't handle it. Now you're losing employees because you're stressing them out. So have a solid plan for growth from the get-go. And that's it. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so one more time, just tell the people your name, tell them where you're from, tell them how they can find you. Okay, I am Shanisha Howard. I'm from Jones, Alabama. You can find my website, www.windownmarketing.com, because you wind down, we market. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Wind Down Marketing. So um, if you are listening to this, if you DM us with the word podcast, I'll know where you came from, and I'll be happy to offer you a $150 discount off the first month of services. Thank you. The Drop plug. Hold on, hold on. Listen. Put the camera on me real quick. Yeah. Put the, let me swing. <laughs> the plug. <laughs> the, look, man. Go real quick. Check her out. DM her. Put podcast. Sis just said she giving you one fifty all the first month of service, bro. That's what we call a trial period. So you can figure out exactly what you want to do, so you ain't spending all your chill. Right. So from me to y'all, if y'all listening. Slide through her DMs, check her out. She didn't drop some gems. She know what she talking about. She didn't talk algorithms. She didn't talk SEO. She didn't talk consistency. She didn't talk patterns. She didn't talk about the pie that she seen in her <laughs> textbook when she went to school. Because I know it was a diagram that she seen when she was in school. And she gave it to us. Because <laughs> I, I ain't, because look, I ain't never seen, I know what she talking about. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't never seen no marketing diagram, but when I seen it in, in computer science stuff. You know what I'm saying? But when she said what she said, I knew right then that she knew what she was talking about. So y'all make sure y'all go and support her, follow her on social media, man. Uh, make sure you share her work and what she's doing. Y'all already know we are about networking here uh, on, on this podcast and this platform. We're about making sure that we can rub shoulders with the people we want to rub shoulders with. And as always, man, we appreciate y'all stopping through. We appreciate y'all chilling with us. We appreciate y'all watching. But if you have not liked, if you have not commented, but most importantly, if you have not subscribed, do that before you click out this video, man. And we're going to appreciate you much, much, and much love, man. And until next time, I'm your host, LaCheston. And I'm your co-host, Kim. Y'all be good, man. Peace.